Hi at Videoactive, um, we are the booth of Black Magic, and um, there's not a new camera this time. This is still the Pocket Mini 4K, which was released in NAB, so there's no new camera this time. But they did something else. They improved the new cameras or the cameras they had already. So there is a software now which uh, can be applied to a lot of cameras, and this is a raw codec. This is Blackmagic's first real raw codec, and how this will appear or how it works, we are now Craig. Hi, how are you? So we've announced at IBC this year Blackmagic Raw. Um, this is an exciting and new codec for us to provide expanded raw capability in our cinema products. Um, it's available now as a public beta for Ursa Mini Pro 4.6K, so owners of this product can try out the new codec. Uh, it will be coming to Pocket Camera hopefully shortly. We're going to take a look at what we can do about that in due course. But to give you some explanation about what Blackmagic RAW really offers, um, I'll use this camera and then... Uh, I can, I can ask you, you had already a RAW system, DNG, Cinema DNG, why do you don't, don't you use this anymore? No, Cinema DNG is still available. It's still a lossless option inside the camera. But what we found with Cinema DNG, there was a couple of things that we really weren't attractive to using for many people. It's, uh, it's a very big file size, it's very demanding on media in the camera, so shooting time is really reduced. And it requires a lot of processing and resolve, you know, really to debayer it and then work with it from a color point of view. So RAW does offer us in Cinema DNG a, a great option, and there's still a lot of people out there that will be supported with it and their workflows. But Blackmagic RAW works in a different way. And what we've done significantly is change some of the processing and put that into the camera. So first of all, we do something called a partial demosaic in the camera itself. So this is starting to work on the color profile of the, the sensor and the development and the recording of that file in camera rather than expecting just GPU intensive processing in Resolve. And it means that we have a really efficient process and we can record in camera and go through all of the edit and then grade with a single video file. So there's no transcoding, there's no need to do optimized media or create offline proxies to edit. It's a really efficient and neat codec within the camera and interpose. Is it something similar what what uh, RED, for example, does with their Wavelet codecs when they use RAW with 123, 125, something like this? It's got a similar method, and what you have as option in camera for recording, if I show you, we have something called constant bitrate. So we have here a kind of natural looking ratio between 3 to 1, uh, 5 to 1, 8 to 1, and 12 to 1. And as a constant bitrate, you can then judge your media requirements, what your time of recording would be, whether you've got enough storage for what the quality you want to record would be. But alongside that, we also have something called constant quality. Now this works differently, whereas there is still a base level in terms of the performance and the output we want. And you have two options called Q0 and Q5. And this works into Q0 is roughly around 2 to 1 up to about 7 to 1, but it doesn't have a fixed base rate. If it knows that the data at each frame needs a little bit more work, it allows that data rate to go up into headroom and then come back down again. This must be a very special algorithm which decides if the picture is still as good as you want it if you change data rate. Very much so, and something that's designed by our camera specialists and by our hardware and software development team for the cameras and works specifically with 4.6K sensor now. And that's some of the work we're going to look at doing for the Pocket 4K coming forward. So it's sympathetic to the sensor and it's profiled to the quality of the sensor. What it's actually allowed us to do with the 4.6K sensor is gain an extra stop in the shadows that we couldn't do with the Cinema DNG. So it's improved the latitude of the sensor as well as providing um, lower bit rates, higher performance and a cleaner, sharper image for us as well throughout. Let us move to the player because you need to play back the stuff that you're producing here, right? Absolutely, yeah. So the Resolve 15.1 is up online now, so you need this version and update of Resolve if you want to work with the Blackmagic RAW codec. Um, we have put an SDK out as well, so this entire format is completely free. It's in the SDK, We've, we have a software decoder we're hoping that other software developers will want to use and support. And we put it into Resolve 15.1 right now. So, only so I can use it only with 15.1, the new release? Only in that version of Resolve. And then we do have something called the Blackmagic RAW player. And what the RAW player allows us to do is open up our RAW files and view them. I have a question. Does it work immediately? Because a player software sometimes needs a lot of computer uh, power or it, it needs time to open the stuff. What did you do there? Well, no, because the codec itself is so efficient and it's designed, it supports AVX, AVX2, SSE. 
it's profiled and ready for hardware acceleration if needed in OpenCL, CUDA or Apple Metal. But in terms of player, it's natively supported. I can just open a clip and then I can actually fully preview the file. So I don't need to be on a Resolve machine. This could be on set on a laptop. It could just be checking the file. This was important information. I can do it on set with a laptop. Can I, Craig? Yes, you can. Yes, you can. So we have it ready. You will be killed if not. <laughs> no, we have it ready for um, OS X now. Mac, uh, Windows versions have come, but it is fast and efficient. And it shows this is the benefit of it. We have a raw codec playing directly in a player. So I can shoot, I can go into post, I can start to make decisions about what shots I want to keep. I can review how I want to grade or work with any of this content. And it's built directly into Resolve as well. So how is this working? I have a player which is a window, or does it contain more? Let me show you something in Resolve, and then I'll come back to what we can do around the raw player itself. So if I reopen DaVinci here and show you. So in, in DaVinci Resolve, in the media page, as we already can, we can review the metadata from the camera. So I can see camera firmware, frame rate, uh, decisions about white point, etc. that were made. If there's any other camera notes or lens... And notes. color gamut and all this stuff, which, in, which I need for raw because I recorded it like that? That's all viewable. So if I go into the color page, Blackmagic oh, Raw. There's, there's camera raw already, I see. Yeah. So what I can do here is I'm actually decoding using the camera metadata. So that means what hap what's happening is Resolve is reading the metadata to the clip and then promoting that to the actual visual representation here in the software. And then I can make color decisions and delivery decisions from that metadata as shot. But I might want to change that. Now, one of the very special things about Blackmagic Raw... Yeah, maybe you need another gamut or you need another color space or whatever, no? So I can change this in inside of, of uh, DaVinci Resolve now. You can. So it's a 12-bit non-linear RAW file that then allows us to record extra information about exposure or profile on top in the metadata and actually choose, if I wanted to, to ignore that when I get to DaVinci. So I can change this to the RAW output and now I have access to that RAW profile rather than, say, Rec. 709. If I prefer, actually, I could do it on a clip-by-clip -clip basis. It means that I can actually go into the image and, let's say, rather than it being 1600 here, I could change it to 400, maybe adjust the exposure, maybe the saturation, and I'm making color profile and grading decisions literally on the clip before I go into Resolve and do that. And then what I can do is actually save that metadata and update the sidecar file directly from DaVinci Resolve. That sidecar file is saved with the Blackmagic RAW file and is linked to that. So I have a Blackmagic RAW file that I can open in the Blackmagic RAW player. We see that we can play that back and work with that and view it. But the sidecar file itself is also viewable in, say, text edit. And what I can see here is I can see the metadata presented to me in a human readable format. And if I wanted to here, I can actually make decisions about the ISO or color information save it in here, update it, and because the metadata has been altered in the same way Resolve would do that for me, that information changes when we reopen the clip in Resolve or further down in post-production. Just change? Just changed it, yeah. I mean, oh, let's have a go. So if I make that 1600 and then save the file, save that, close it, we open the file, we've now changed the exposure rating of that particular shot. And we can do that with any number of shots we want to, either inside of DaVinci or in the text edit file and the human readable information. And the power of Blackmagic RAW is that we're not locked into those video profiles from camera. We always have that 12-bit non-linear RAW profile underneath. So, perfect, Ray. And uh, this all costs nothing, I think. No, it's free. So the upgrade for the cameras is free. DaVinci 15.1, if you have a license, is a free upgrade. Perfect. Thanks, great. Thanks for the information and let's hope that RAW will do its way. I hope so. Yeah, looking forward to it.